Okay, so this is video three for part B of your photosynthesis lab. Um, so this is about cyclic electron flow. So just as a quick reminder, from video one, we did linear electron flow. So if electrons go in one direction. So electrons started uh, when, we split it, uh, when we split the water molecule and released some uh, electrons. Those were given to photosystem two. And that electron basically went down the electron transport chain where it actively transported hydrogen ions across the membrane. Uh, to photosystem one, where it was energized with light again, and then that high energy electron was given to NADP plus reductase, and which placed that high energy electron into NADPH. So that electron carrier then takes that high energy electron away from these uh, proteins and uses it up um, to make glucose. Okay, those high energy electrons end up in the glucose, um, and so they don't come back. So overall, it's linear electron flow because we take away electrons from water, pass it all the way down to NADPH, and that's it. Um, now, let's say that the cell, though, has enough NADPH, right, but it needs more ATP, okay, whether it's for reactions right away or for making glucose. So um, if it only wants ATP and not NADPH, then we can do cyclic electron flow. Okay, so I'll walk you through this two times to see how this works. So in cyclic electron flow, we're not going to use photosystem 2 at all. We're only going to use photosystem 1. So photosystem 1 will absorb light and capture, uh, use that energy, capture it as uh, high energy electrons, which pass it all the way to the P700. And now we have a high energy electron here. Okay, goes to the primary electron acceptor to ferredoxin as before. But unlike before, ferredoxin is not going to give that electron away for NADPH. It's going to actually go back and give it to plastoquinone instead, to the beginning of the electron transport chain. So we're going to get to do So it looks like ferredoxin is a mobile element, kind of like a fairy, just to move electrons around in the stroma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Unlike these other membrane-bound proteins that are stuck to the membrane, as far as scientists can tell right now, um, ferredoxin is actually very mobile anywhere inside the stroma. Around the, uh, uh, around the thylakoid membrane. So when the electron gets to plastoquinone, it's going to go down the electron transport chain as before, releasing its energy bit by bit as it actively transports hydrogen ions across the membrane. And it goes all the way back to photosystem 1 again. And from here, we can do it all over again. Capture a photon, pass it to the um, P700 chlorophyll A molecule in photosystem 1. Primary electron acceptor, some ferredoxin made its way back to this port here. And again, fairies attach the beginning of the electron transport chain, giving it to plastoquinone. And again, this energy is used just to transport hydrogen ions across the membrane. So notice that in this process, we did not have to split water because we didn't give away any of the electrons. We just took the same electron and went around and around in a cyclic uh, flow. Um, and also that we're not making any NADPH. Okay? All we're doing is taking that electron, using it to capture light energy, and transfer it to this hydrogen ion gradient. From here, the hydrogen ion gradient, which you see, we now have more hydrogen ions inside and less outside of the thylakoid membrane. That hydrogen ion gradient can then be used to make ATP, as you saw in video one. Okay, so uh, please talk to your team, uh, answer the last couple questions in your lab manual, and then sign up for a checkpoint conversation, and uh, have a great week. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Sarah.